Welcome to our brief introduction to the classic 1959 movie, Darby O'Gill and the Little People. This film promises a roller coaster of emotions with its mix of humor, surprises, and poignant moments. Stay tuned as we delve into some funny, shocking, and even sad facts about this beloved movie. As we explore Darby O'Gill and the Little People, consider how it may have impacted your own life. Perhaps there's a scene or moment that left a lasting impression on you. We'd love to hear your cherished memories or personal experiences related to this film. Share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. So, grab your popcorn and get ready for a journey filled with magic laughter and maybe even a few tears. There's a lot to uncover about this timeless classic, so keep watching. Dabry O'Gill and the Little People is considered one of Disney's best movies, much like The Wizard of Oz. It's a great family film that takes you on an emotional journey through sad, funny, scary, and happy moments. The story follows Darby O'Gill, played by Albert Sharp, who tells stories about leprechauns in an Irish village. When he meets the Leprechaun King, he struggles to convince others, especially with the challenges he faces, like losing his job to a newcomer named Sean, played by Sean Connery. The movie beautifully shows Irish culture with its folklore and magical elements, including banshees and the death coach. Some parts might be a bit scary for younger viewers, but overall, it's a fantastic choice for St. Patrick's Day. Darby O'Gill and the Little People highlights Disney's storytelling skills, offering an enjoyable movie for everyone. In the movie Darby O'Gill and the Little People, there's an actor who later became Mia Sarah's former father-in-law. He's known for playing James Bond in Thunderball and Never Say Never Again. He's the only Bond actor to appear in both Eon and non-Eon productions. Even though he had success, he said no to the main role in the original, The Thomas Crown Affair, which he later admitted was a big mistake. This actor's career has unique achievements and choices that make his filmography stand out. In Darby O'Gill and the Little People, his performance adds charm to the movie, showing his versatility beyond playing James Bond. He's been in various film genres, showing he can adapt to different roles. Overall, the movie is a piece of cinematic history, featuring a lead actor with a noteworthy career, encompassing both Bond and other diverse roles. Its appeal lies not only in its fantastical story, but also in the actor who brought Darby O'Gill to life on the screen. In Darby O'Gill and the Little People, Jason Connery, son of the lead actor, was in talks for a role in Namaste London, but couldn't reach an agreement with the producer. He is known for portraying Juan Sanchez Villa Lobos Ramirez in Highlander and its sequel. Apart from his James Bond role, this is the only character he reprised in multiple films. During the filming of Diamonds Are Forever, he was romantically involved with both Jill St. John and Lana Wood. He won the 1970-1971 Obie for Best Performance by an actor in the off-Broadway play Beckett. Along with Wolfgang Preis, he is one of only two actors to appear in both films based on books by Cornelius Ryan, The Longest Day, and A Bridge Too Far. He was offered the role of Robert Elliott by Brian De Palma in Dress to Kill and was enthusiastic about it, but declined on account of previously acquired commitments. Darby O'Gill and the Little People, released in 1959, features an interesting backstory regarding the actor who played the lead role. He declined the part of Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings trilogy due to the lengthy filming schedule in New Zealand and his lack of understanding of the novels. This decision reportedly cost him around $450 million. He hailed from his mother's clan MacLean and was voted sexiest man of the century by People magazine in 1999. This adds layers to the actor's persona, showcasing his versatility and personal achievements beyond his role in the film. Darby O'Gill and the Little People, a 1959 movie, features a lead character who had a disability pension of nine shillings a week from the British Navy until his demise. He sported two small tattoos on his right arm, one declaring Scotland forever and the other dedicated to his parents. These tattoos were acquired at the age of 16 when he joined the Royal Navy. Additionally, he was seriously considered for the role of King Philip of Macedonia in Oliver Stone's Alexander film. Sean Connery, the famous actor best known for playing James Bond, was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Festa del Cinema in Rome on October 13, 2006. The award, called the Marco Aurelio Award, recognized his long-lasting work in movies. He also received an award from Panama's President Mario Moscoso on March 10, 2003 for his acting skills during a visit to Panama. During the filming of Another Time, Another Place, Connery showed bravery when he stood up to a gangster named Johnny Stampinato who had threatened Lana Turner, Connery's former girlfriend. Stampinato had to leave the set after the confrontation. 
Sadly, Stampinato later died after being stabbed by Turner's daughter Cheryl in a shocking incident. Sean Connery's influence stretches beyond just movies, with recognition for his work and acknowledgement of his talent and versatility. His brave act on the film set shows his courage and determination. In the movie, King Brian showcases cannons and treasures purportedly taken from Spanish ships wrecked on the Irish coast in 185 and 88. This incident occurred during the Spanish Armada's failed invasion of England, resulting in Spanish ships being wrecked along the Irish coast. Survivors were pursued by the English government and their treasures were seized. He considers his role in The Man Who Would Be King as his favorite movie role. He shares a birthday with Bridget Bardo. In 1965, he clinched the Variety Club of Great Britain Film Actor Award for his roles in The Hill and Goldfinger. However, in September 2004, he withdrew from a film project triggering speculation about retirement. Three months later, in an interview with a Scotsman newspaper from his residence in the Bahamas, he revealed his intention to take a year off to pen his autobiography, a decision he had previously resisted. He also expressed hopes of returning to filmmaking. Notably, he declined the opportunity to portray the architect in both The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions in 23. Darby O'Gill and The Little People is a movie from 1959. After his role in The Exorcist, the actor passed away in New York. His career highlights in the 90s included The Rock and Entrapment, but he regretted his involvement in The Avengers. He was considered for a cameo in Skyfall, but the directors thought it would be too distracting. Instead, Albert Finney took the role. Darby O'Gill and The Little People is a 1959 movie directed by Walt Disney. It follows the story of a man named Darby O'Gill and his encounters with leprechauns in Ireland. The film stars Sean Connery, who later gained fame as James Bond, as one of the main characters. Connery's father, Joseph Connery, passed away from throat cancer in August 1972. In the 1970s, Sean Connery ventured into directing and narrating two documentary films focusing on the fight for survival in the third world. Additionally, he received the 1972 Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle Award for Distinguished Performance for his role in the play, The Works of Beckett at the Mark Taper Forum Theater in Los Angeles, California. Sean Connery's career spanned various roles and achievements beyond his involvement in Darby O'Gill and The Little People. In the movie, Sir Sean Connery played a character named Michael McBride. He was the last surviving cast member until his death on October 31, 2020. Michael Weston from Burn Notice used the same name with his Irish contacts. Kieran Moore, who played Pony Sugru, passed away on July 15, 2007. During one scene, Darby is tricked into chasing a puka instead of his horse. Later, he realizes that Katie is also chasing the same puka, which can take on different animal forms. Pukas can be either dangerous or friendly. The most famous friendly puka is known as Harvey from a 1950 film. 